for joining us. Today, we are going to share our story of year one of the Zulili experimentation platform. We are going to talk about challenges we face, the achievements we reach, and lessons we learn while building our internal experimentation platform. First, a little about ourselves. My name is Angela, and I'm a data scientist on the Zulili experimentation platform. I'm experiencing the entire experimentation lifecycle from design to pipeline construction to result analytics. I'm Namrata, and I'm a data engineer on the Zulili experimentation platform. My specialty and passion are in data governance and scale data automation. At Zulili, our mission is to deliver the best shopping experience for now. Being in the online retail industry for more than 11 years, we have committed ourselves to providing mom unique funds with unbeatable prices and a fun shopping experience. To delight her with the best shopping experience, we are innovating on every single touch point with our customers. These various new experiences launch every day. The business has a strong need to evaluate the impact of all initiatives to make sure they are delighted mom in every single one of her interactions with Zulili. The randomized online experimentation mechanism comes into play because it provides a proven framework to quantify impact and provide fair evaluations. Therefore, at Zulili, we treat every single touch point with mom as the opportunity to experiment. However, our early experimentation mechanism was not very efficient in understanding mom's experience. Because our interactions with mom involve several different business functions and different teams use their own way to measure impact, it made our early phase experimentation fragmented, inconsistent, time consuming, and difficult to learn from. That's true. Our early phase experimentation mechanisms had several pain points. Namrada, do you have any specific examples of these pain points? Yes, from an engineering perspective, our early process was pretty fragmented. Because each team developed their tools and interfaces mostly organically, we saw various duplicated tools with similar functionalities operating live simultaneously. Also, due to a lack of communication between teams while developing these tools, the compatibility between tools was lacking. Another limitation was that our tool sets were incomplete. As most tools in each team were developed mostly for ad hoc analysis purposes, most of them had limited logging of data and metric coverage. More importantly, the lack of a testing environment and monitoring systems made the process very fragile. Angela, were there any pain points from the user's perspective? Yes, I want to highlight two areas. First, most initial tools were overly complicated and manual. The tool required data scientists and or analysts to devote a huge amount of time to conduct manual data collection in SQL and enable readouts. The average time to enable a test used to be as long as three to five days. Also, the scattered process made measuring interaction effects between tests exceedingly difficult. The other pain point I want to cover is the knowledge share process. Without a dedicated forum for experimentation, knowledge, institutional understanding, and best practices were rarely shared between these different business organizations. Because of these reasons, PMs, analysts, data scientists, and executives had trouble interpreting results and making decisions informed by these experimentation activities. The so leading experimentation platform, or ZXP in short, is formed to address these pain points. ZXP as a team aims to consolidate all different pieces of experimentation into a single self-service platform to better understand and serve mom or customer. In our first year, the ZXP team completed four major tasks to directly tackle those pain points. We identified four areas in the experimentation lifecycle that require changes most, spanning execution all the way to analysis. These four areas are backend, data, result communication, and community building. For backend, 
we desire to have a system that can create, configure, and monitor execution. For data, we would like to enable one source of truth. For results, we hope to emphasize documentation, training, and user support. And lastly, for the internal community, we would like to cultivate an experimentation-first culture. Namrada, could you share more about the specific changes we made at the back end? Before the redesign, data scientists needed to manually query test data from BigQuery, then calculate statistics offline and provide a one-off test read for every single test. As you can see, this process is very manual. It does not have a dedicated testing environment, and data scientists are doing a lot of data engineer work. We spent tremendous efforts on redesigning our backend pipelines so that it can support not only one or two readouts here and there, but it provides standardized readout capabilities at scales of hundreds, if not thousands, of readouts simultaneously. To free up the data scientists, we introduced many new tools into the process. First, we start producing configurables for each test so that the queries can automatically construct it based on input config. Then we standardize an automated statistical calculation and readout UI to reduce repeated and redundant works for each test. Second, we established a common source of truth for all the reads out and enhanced monitoring system. Lastly, we adopted Terraform for version control purposes. With the new tool, we can have a staging environment for new feature development and a production environment for users to use. Thanks so much for doing that. Thanks to this process, the lead time for producing a test reduced drastically from days, if not weeks, into minutes. What else did we do on the engineering side? We also invested in data enhancement. Remember before each team had their own data source and metric definition, meaning for a question as simple as how to define revenue, you may have received different formulas and queries if you ask a person from finance versus a person from marketing. That's not the case anymore. We now have a single definition for each of these metrics that is all agreed upon by different teams. To further improve accountability and shareability of our results, the team spent time communicating with different orgs, understanding their terminologies and requirements, and finally consolidating and documenting metrics into one standardized customer table. Finally, we have one standardized customer table for experimentation readout to use. This new table not only reduces the query complexity when conducting test readout, it also increases accountability of the platform and ensures people are on the same page when discussing results. Angela, what did we do to share the results? With better accountability, we took our next step to make sure people are using our platform properly. Although experimentation design and interpretation are a highly specialized area, at Zulili, we believe everyone should be able to launch and learn from online experimentations. Therefore, we provided a collection of supporting materials to make sure colleagues from all business functions could make the most use of our platform, both efficiently and correctly, of course. Specifically, we built a metric library to ensure transparency on metrics in the test readout. We aligned all parties on the definition of query for these metrics to avoid confusion and misunderstanding. What is more, based on each team's specific needs, we created a tailored documentation to provide clarity on the process for each business need. So a lot of writing is in that period. Then, we hosted live sessions to demo our system and point out potential pitfalls to reduce misuse and misinterpretation of results. Finally, we enabled on-call support. We were data science team members provide live consulting on power analysis and answer questions about platform usage and result interpretations. This comprehensive training and support encourages more users to use experimentation platform as a default. We have observed the number of users on the platform has boosted in the past year. What else did we do? Although documentation and training are effective ways to encourage usage, 
We don't think it's enough, actually, because experimentation is more than submitting readout requests and waiting for the stars of statistical significance to appear. We would like our team, including ourselves, to continue learning from the industry frontiers and, of course, from each other. To learn from the industry experts, we hosted reading sessions to discuss books and publications and how to involve our platform to meet or even exceed the industry standard. To boost the culture of experimentation first, we gathered users from different business functions periodically into our experimentation clearinghouse meetup. People discussed their successes and failures for interesting experiments to inspire each other and foster shared institutional knowledge about our customers. And all this without the benefit of in-person meetings due to the COVID pandemic. I do feel I have learned a lot from both the reading sessions and the meetups. Although ZXP is only one year old, we have observed quite a few quantifiable results. For one, the backend pipeline improvement increased our test read capacity. We have seen number of test read double compared to last year. On top of that, the more standardized data reduced query complexity and improved the trustworthiness of the system. It also reduced the test launch lead time from days into minutes. Results education and support democratized the experimentation tool sets and process. The number of users on the platform has tripled. Also, the internal community is closing the feedback loop of the experimentation. Latest ideas and cross-functional projects have drastically increased in the past year. To summarize, we agree that it is very hard to develop a new experimentation platform while keeping on the lights for legacy systems. However, our story has proved that it is totally doable if companies decide to invest in experimentation as a discipline in its own right. And even after only one year, the results are significant. As the figure shows, we have achieved the same results as many leading companies in the industry. In order to boost experimentation, we recognize that the company needs to acknowledge that the experimentation platform is a worthy project and dedicate resources for it. Actually, our year one effort not only tackle our most urgent pain points, but it also provided a robust foundation for future development, which we feel we can tackle with confidence. For example, we will begin supporting dynamic and sequential treatment assignments for customer journeys and joint experimentation and optimization frameworks like contextual bandits. That's super exciting. Thanks so much for listening. We are looking forward to hearing your comments and questions.